It's springtime, which means rhubarb. So I am sharing an einkorn rhubarb cake, a honey sweetened rhubarb jam, and I am organizing and decluttering my food storage area and making it a place that will work for when the bounty comes in in the fall. let's get started with this cake. The full recipe will be on my blog at www.davykillian.com where you can get a free printable or the printable recipe for you to keep in your baking repertoire. So this is an einkorn rhubarb cake and it is so delicious. The rhubarb is prevalent right now and so I am trying to use ways to um, use it up. I don't actually grow it myself however I have neighbors, I have friends and it is just something that I love baking with. So rhubarb cake you need eggs and sour cream and some einkorn flour of course, vanilla, baking soda, yes baking soda not baking powder, um, I use brown sugar and you typically need a little bit of salt and then of course the two cups of rhubarb and sometimes I reduced it because depending on the rhubarb sometimes it's tartar sometimes it's not as tart so depending on your sweetness level you can either do like one and three fourths cup rhubarb or two cups rhubarb same with the brown sugar if you want a little sweeter add a little bit more but I just checked it to see if it was done and, and I flipped it out. And so I tried making a pretty decoration on the top because I had some extra frosting. And yeah, ignore the breakfast suit on the counter too because, you know, you do what you can to get this cake displayed and ready. So I put some strawberry on top with a strawberry buttercream frosting and oh goodness, it was so delicious. I actually made it for my own birthday, which was fun. I enjoyed it and I made it many times since. So there is my beautiful piece of rhubarb cake. So once the cake is done, let's move on to the jam, which is a ginger cinnamon rhubarb jam. You can leave out the ginger if you don't have fresh ginger. It's still really good with just the cinnamon, but that fresh ginger just gives it that little pop, and I love that taste, especially with rhubarb being so tart. So I have six cups of rhubarb. I do one teaspoon grated ginger, I think I did two teaspoons cinnamon, and then two cups of raw honey, and then I believe four and a half teaspoons of the pectin that you need for a low sugar jam. Since you're using honey, you get a low sugar jam. Then I just stirred that a little bit and I also let it simmer for about 10, 15 minutes till it was all blended. And then I decided to immerse and blend it because I didn't want the really big chunks of rhubarb that I had chopped. So it just makes it a little bit smoother. I did leave a few chunks because it is a jam. Now I'm also sharing with you how I canned this recipe. So I use the jam jars, of course. Um, that doesn't last us real long because we all eat the bread in the morning for breakfast, so the jam goes quite fast. So I just dumped the hot jam into the sterilized jars, and then I put the sterilized lids on top, screwed the rings on, and then I did it in a hot water bath for 10 minutes, making sure the water was covering them by an inch and pulled them out and let them cool on my counter for 24 hours. And if you don't want to can it, you can freeze the jam. You can put it in jars and refrigerate it or freeze it, put it in freezer bags. But I don't even use a hot water bath when I make jams. I just use a stock pot, as you see. Um, there is sometimes a issue that people run into of the jar jars um, rattling too much and cracking. I have not ever had that happen. And yes, I do can on a flat top stove as well. I have a flat surface stove and I use my big canner even on there. And it has been fine. Yes, there's a few scratches because I use cast iron too but I enjoy using those better than um, keeping my flat top really pristine. So I already told you the whole process, but these rhubarb recipes, the cake will be on the blog, the, and it is currently on the blog, and the jam will be coming soon. Now I also make this jam for every, or this recipe for every jam I make. So since I've been canning, it is time to get to reorganizing and clean, cleaning our little food storage area, which is also our utility electrical box 
food area. So I've shared this space a few times. I'm showing both sides and you're seeing how small it is. But I knew I needed to get out the rotten tomato, or rotten potatoes, the rotten squash, and just make it a little bit cleaner and nicer for when I start making more canned goods and putting the fall produce on the shelves because summertime is not a great time to be cleaning out a food pantry storage area when I need to be outside. So actually you're seeing me do this um, several months ago, honestly, and I'm finally getting to the end part where I can show you the final footage because this has been waiting to be put on YouTube. And I thought this is a good video to put it on when I'm making a canning recipe because canned storage area and canning go hand in hand. So I just had my girls and myself take a bunch of the items out on the right side. The left side still stayed and I did reorganize that some as you'll see in the end and just getting it swept, getting all the cobwebs off. So I store all of our foods and coffees, granola bars, um, instant oatmeal packs that we use for our guest cottage in this food storage area as well and I needed to just reorganize it. There were so many extra boxes, so many extra things that did not need to be there. So I just combined some of the granola bars and the um, oatmeal into a box, combined all the coffee pods into a different box, and really just tried to minimize all the different pieces I had in order to fit better. So these containers I all had on hand already, which is wonderful. So it's no spend. Just browse around the house, see what I can find, whatever container works and just put things in so it fits well. And it still looks pretty nice. I don't decant everything because I can't, I don't have this space. And then I do have some wheat berries. I was putting in this five gallon bucket and at the end here you'll see that I tried to close it but my husband did come in with a mallet to close it all the way. It lasts about five years if you don't have it in a mylar bag. So that should be fine because I'll be using it sooner than that. So this little shelf I did order off of Amazon and I'll link it for you below. It works well for our waters we provide for our guests to storing all the extra snacks we have, the snacks for the guest cottage. We really enjoy Zevia in our house, so a shelf was designated for that. It's kind of a special drink we have. My husband drinks that once a day and I'll drink it every so often. And so just all our extra other dry good snacks like nuts and raisins, um, my teas that I really enjoy, I put in this little basket I had. And then on the bottom are things like our food um, preserver piece as well as the hand grinder for um, the grain. I also have some food storage bags, other things like that. So it just made it so much nicer to have that shelf even though it's little but get everything off the floor yes this food storage space is small but it works well for what i need it for we are a family of five with a little one who doesn't eat a whole lot yet so it's nice to have this space for the foods we do eat and the items i do can So on the bottom, I have all my empty jars on the left side there, and my large rings are on an old curtain rod, so they're just all along the bottom. And then all my extra jars, some are canned goods. You can see the jams are getting more filled up with some of the rhubarb and the strawberry rhubarb I have just made. We have quite a few peaches left still, so this year I probably won't be needing to do quite as many peaches. And going up, I still have a few green beans left. I don't can everything. I have some pickled beets left, some pickles left, and then we do buy some sauces and I still have some canned tomatoes as well. I do like to always have extra milks and proteins and things like that on hand. As you can see, um, I'll often have lots of syrups and nut butters. Our oats we make sure to never run out of and coffee as well and then I do have my different flowers that I use einkorn coconut almond and the all-purpose flowers at the very back are some of my potatoes sweet potatoes onions garlic and my canners so there is my little food storage mm -hmm. 